Thank you so much for tuning in today. Today's webinar is to give you the beginning steps in improving your child's physiology. I think that many families who are thinking of signing up for our course or who have already signed up are anxious to make changes now. And my hope is to give you some things to work on. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Today's webinar is to give you the beginning steps in improving your child's physiology. I think many families who are thinking of signing up for our parent training course or who have already signed up are anxious to make changes now. And my hope is to give you some things to work on until we can see you at one of our Domen Method courses. Now, to introduce myself, my name is Melissa Doman, and I am the Director of Physical Development and Nutrition at Doman International. Okay, so let's go over what you need to know right now about physiology for your child. First, brain-injured children need as much oxygen to the brain as possible. When you come to take the course, you're going to hear us say this a lot, <laughs> okay? And that's because your child is in a chronic state of oxygen deprivation. Signs of this may be poor speech or lack of speech altogether, tight or loose muscles, poor vision, poor chewing and swallowing, and more. It is also very important to know that for children who have seizures, it's because of a lack of oxygen. To put it simply, what happens is that the brain wants to go and do something or needs to do something. And in order to make that happen, it needs oxygen to fuel the action. If there's not enough, it will trigger a seizure response to get the oxygen that it needs. In many ways, Seizures can actually be a life-saving response. You have to look at it like fever or vomiting. Our body has this response to get rid of an illness, to get rid of something that is causing harm. So a seizure is your body's way of saying it needs oxygen. Does that make sense? So in conclusion, the brain needs oxygen to fuel. It can't do anything that it needs to without this. Next, what we put into our bodies greatly affects brain function as well. Now, did you know that the stomach and the lining of our intestines contain over 100 million neurons? That's even more than what is present in the spinal cord, <laughs> all right? Um, so often the stomach and our digestive system is called the second brain and it's equipped with its own set of senses and reflexes and can function more or less independently from the brain to do all the dirty work, so to speak. <laughs> However, if there's anything that is going through the digestive system that really shouldn't be there, it's no surprise that we see abnormal function. If this system, the digestive system, is disorganized, brain power then has to be used to try and fix the problem. And this can cause a lot of chaos in the body. So by making sure the body is well fed with the right foods, it will allow the brain to do the sophisticated things it has to. But we'll touch more on this later. And finally, we need to live a life of balance. We never want to have too much of anything. So making sure that your child has a good source of fats, carbs, and proteins, these are all excellent to boost brain power and growth. These are key. When there's too much of something, things start to get a bit out of whack. And now you know, a well-functioning digestive system is important to boost brain power. So knowing you're feeding your child the right foods 
and in the right balance will assure that you'll see changes from a neurological standpoint. Now, what are some things that you can start doing right now to help your child from a physiological standpoint, even before coming to a course or before seeing us? Well, first, get your chi child moving and active every single day. Now, this may seem like a point more about physical activity, but, but, <laughs> by being physically active, you are increasing the amount of oxygen that's going through your body and ultimately to your brain. Activities that oxygenate the brain help the brain to function better and helps to develop the respiratory system. If the respiratory system is functioning well and you're feeding your child's brain with oxygen, you will see improvements in muscle tone, language, vision, intellectual development, and more. Okay, so you want to give your child as much opportunity to move as possible. So if your child is able to run, have them run daily. If your child can walk, have them walk daily. If your child's highest mobility level is creeping on hands and knees, have them do this as much as possible every single day. And finally, if your child can crawl on their tummies, have, them, have your child crawl as much as possible. Reinforcing ability will help your child advance in mobility. And as an additional benefit, the more opportunity a child has to move, the more organized the brain becomes, and it will unlock new abilities the more that they are repeating that pattern of movement, okay? So it's not only to help improve res respiration, which is vital, okay? But the more your child is able to do that activity, it starts to unlock things in the brain that are innately already there, okay? We're all born with those abilities. Uh, and even if there is some delay or no ability yet, the more opportunity a child has to do that activity, it will help them to advance in general from a neurological standpoint. Okay, so next, avoid certain foods that affect brain health and digestion. What you give your child to fuel the body, what do you give your child to fuel the body and brain? Your child's diet greatly impacts brain function. Optimal sleep, diet, and environment is essential for a child to progress physically and intellectually, so not just health-wise, in all areas. So give your child healthy foods and remove all junk and unhealthy foods from your child's diet. So you want to avoid too much sugar or processed foods. And if you are going to buy something off the shelf, read the labels first. If you cannot pronounce an ingredient that's on that label, don't even buy it, okay? And you might consider eliminating common food allergies, such as dairy, gluten, okay? Uh, and even some products like soy. Once these are out of the diet, we often see very nice changes in a child's cognitive function as well as digestion. And it makes sense. Now there's good, healthy foods going through the system. The brain does not have to expend energy to help the digestive tract. So you're going to see improvements in cognitive function and behavior. And we have seen time and time again that once these foods are out of a child's body, and out of a child's diet, not only does the digestive system work better, but it can also positively affect behavior, sleep, and more. Your brain-injured child and brain-injured children in general are sensitive to these foods that are listed here, and their second brain has to work too hard to try and get them out of the system, to process them and get them out. All right, so what we recommend is that you avoid 
this list of foods as much as possible. And finally, make sure to give your child a balanced source of organic foods. The second brain, your digestive tract, is a happy brain when it gets these foods. So give your child good sources of vegetables and fruits. Whole grains are key carbohydrates that give the body more energy to work with. And in that, you can include simple carbohydrates as well. So potatoes, carrots, root vegetables, things like that. And good sources of animal protein or vegetable proteins. You'll see I have lentils there. Um, so good sources of animal proteins and fats contain proteins and aminos that the brain converts into hormones that it makes us feel good, sleep, and grow physically adequately. Now, this slide is laid out in a way so that you know, roughly, how the plate should be broken down. So your child should be getting at least half of their food sources through veggies. Fruits are important, but should really only be given as a snack. The other 50% of your child's plate at mealtime should be split between animal or vegetable proteins, carbohydrates through grains or root vegetables, and fats. When these things are in balance, parents will often find that constipation is resolved, a child is more relaxed in their muscles, they have less reflux, or they have much more energy to do the things that they need to than they did before. However, we have also seen that too much of any of these foods can cause issues as well. So do your best to keep your child's plate well proportioned. Now that being said, there are exceptions to this rule. Okay, but if your child is not getting a whole lot of these foods right now, start just by introducing these things a little bit at a time, okay? And eventually your child will be able to tolerate these foods much better. Now, I hope that this information can be helpful to you. And I also hope that this allows you to start some great things at home before coming to see us at the Doman Method course. I am curious to know how it worked once I see you. <laughs> All right, so if you come to a course and you've implemented some of these things, please don't hesitate to come and find me and update me on how your child is doing. Now, should you have any questions between now and the course, we are here to help. Please feel free to get in contact with your course representative. So depending on where you are in the world, please feel free to reach out to the person that's closest to you and they will be happy to pass your question along to me or any of our staff in the physiology department. Okay, so again, I wanna thank you. Thank you for tuning in and I hope and I look forward to meeting you very soon. Take care.